Time for another episode of Flashback. Flashback. Tracks from the past. In this episode, we'll teach you to connect to the network. Yes, set the serial speed to 9600 BPS. Connect the data circuit terminating equipment to the data terminal and make sure to set your terminal to 8 bits, no parity and one stop it. It's all about the bulletin boards, the scene of hobbyists, the criminals, the fear-inducing headlines and the cyberpunks running through the phone network at 2400 baud. and ability. Before the internet, we connected over phone lines to each other. Sure, there were Usenet and university networks back then. But we, the hobbyists, called each other's computers and wrote intelligent texts to each other. At least we thought they were, back when we were teens. This meant that everyone could have their own system and let others call them. And so we formed a big scene. The person running a system like that was called a sysop, as in system operator, and the system was called a bulletin board system, or BBS. I will call them boards throughout this program, in order not to run out of oxygen. <laughs> Think about it, you had to pay long distance telephone fees to call some boards, and even if they were local, you paid by the minute. Not exactly how the internet works, right?
Michael van den Bas, March of the Halflings. The first electronic bulletin board went up in Chicago, 1978, and we got our first Swedish BBS the very next year. It started slowly, as the home computing era had not yet begun, and few people had access to modems, computers, and even liked the idea of spending money on hour-long calls. But it did happen, if only so slowly. Poplexy by B Hunter of Jazz, classic Amiga 4chan mod tracker module. One technology that made the whole BBS era possible was the modem. Sure, a modem is just something to use to send data over the telephone line. So? Well, when Hayes released the smart modem, the whole thing just took off. This unit was a standalone thing, but came with a set of commands to control them, and soon all the modems used the Hayes command set. You know, do you remember ATDT 7268265 to call that number, hmm? Yeah, that's the most common command. This meant that computers and terminal programs that supported it were allowed to play. Hop on in, the water is warm was the message. Before that, finding the right combination of hardware and software, uh, well, that held the whole revolution back.
Raven of Syndrome, Alone in the City. This podcast talks retrocomputing from a Swedish perspective. So here is Sweden. The BBS scene was sprawling during the 80s. I don't know so much about it as I started in the 90s, but Joachim Melin has written a lot about it. On his blog you can read about how legendary people like Jan Mikkelin were active in the BBS scene and also part of creating the Swedish computer magazine called Dator Magazin. In the beginning it was all a Commodore, but soon expanded to Amiga and later other environments. Most BBSs were small, but some, like Permo Boss, grew large. This board was sponsored by handicap equipment manufacturer Permobil, and it lasted until 1985 when Permobil cut the deal. The reason was that they felt most users on it were not handicapped.
Alex Menke, Light Quest Theme. In 1988, political activist and filmmaker Mai Wechselman successfully sued Eskil Block over something he wrote on the Swedish board com systemet. He accused her of being a traitor and a Soviet agent. This later led to the enactment of the Swedish BBS lagen, ten years later. It made electronic bulletins fall under the law and made prosecution of slander and defamation easier. This law also applies to the internet today. So the new technology could be abused and people were waking up to the dark sides of it. The 90s were upon us and the boards were being examined by mass media. The headlines warned us about the seedy underbelly of the computer networks even before internet was a thing. The terrorists or anarchist handbook was a brain dead text that explained how to make bombs among other things. It was very dangerous to follow it as it came with advice such as if you see bubbles forming run for it. It was sometimes spread among us junglings, as it was cool to have a copy, but I made the good choice of not having it on my board. Then there were the piracy copied games, but we have talked about that in episode 35 already. Some said you could buy drugs, meet with criminals, and then there were the neurotic fear of illegal pornography that made the whole scene look downright evil. But no one I ever spoken to on the whole scene have seen evidence of any of that. We felt annoyed by the press misrepresenting the whole hobby. We were only in it for the discussions and the demos.
Henry Pekka Callio and Matti Brockman. A Taste of Moonshine. Seems a very sweet and nice of a title until you think about what moonshine actually means. Then we have Anita Bondestam. She was the director of the Swedish Authority on Data and Computer Issues, Data Inspektionen. And she says something that rubbed us the wrong way. She compared modems and mopeds. And uh, she noted that you should make sure that kids follow laws, wear a helmet and so on. This way she indirectly compared illegally modified mopeds with our boards. Hmm. Or as we say it here in Data Inspektionen, if you buy a modem, you get into trouble. Well, okay, it sounds better in Swedish where it rhymes. Her views on juvenile delinquency as the direct effect of using modems is something that was very bewildering to us. Three hundred years ago, a great war ravaged our Earth. No one knows how or why it began, but every man, woman and child born from the chaos feel its devastation. Only a small handful of our ancestors survived to start rebuilding the isolated outposts we now maintain in this post-apocalyptic wasteland. The year is now 2306. A small glimmer of hope is all we have to pray to in this accursed darkness. He is a single man, an actual survivor of the war, an immortal. He wanders the blasted land, ridding our planet of the horrific evils unleashed so long ago during the Great War. He is the Traveler.
Morgan, Angel's Deep Shadow. Some other day I will talk more about the 90s and the end of the era. But you know what happened. It was not aliens, it was internet. Sorry, Mr. Tusakalis. Andreas Wiklund of KFMF, Traxa Symphony. We have something good coming up right now. We are working on a big database about all artists that we play. It's in a beta state, but actually available on our webpage. If you go to arcade.radio or if you go to the YouTube and Twitch channels, you can see information about the artists, when they were last played, and also cool stuff like the statistics of played songs. And in the future, you can actually get a card well you click on the link and then you get more information about everything today we have a function that you can click on the link and see the artists data on demosu and puet and uh, uh, their home pages or bandcamp
the Rex back to before tomorrow. Some bad news, I'm afraid. Yeah, there has to be that as well. Uh, there's a demo party running today in Finland called Jumalauta 21. It's on location and also on the web. By You can watch the Twitch channel, basically. We have been unable to reach them and they have not responded when we have tried to. So I don't know if we're going to have the possibility to make an episode about it. But uh, I will see if I can get some help from them. If not, well, there are other demo parties out there. And we will also start making portraits of artists on this podcast in the future. We have Techman today and also Awesome, plus Dr. Awesome and Alistair Brimble. But there are many artists that really, really deserves to be heard and spoken about.
Astro Boy of Pearl Eclipse. We are getting closer to episode 52. This is episode 50, by the way, because it will run more or less, well, close to one year since the station started on the 13th of September 2020. That horrible year it was. We started broadcasting and we've been doing that since. I don't know. We're going to make some cool thing about it. But anyway, this is DJ Demon here thanking you for listening to this podcast flashback to Rex from the past. Saga Musics, Whiskey Drops. 
and uh, we are leading you into the good night with Boomerang and Child of Light. Go to arcade.radio to listen and get the latest news or find flashback tracks from the past anywhere you can find podcasts. The Arcade Radio Network, celebrating over 30 years of tracked music. 